In this video, I would like to show you a game played by our new world champion Dingy Ren back in 2017. His opponent is a very strong Russian grandmaster, Ernesto Ernarkiev, rated 2683. And at that time, Dingy Ren was already a super GM with 2774. The reason I would like to show you this game is because it very nicely teaches us how to build up an attack out of nowhere. So if you like these kind of games, just make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'd like to cover these kind of games. I think they are very important to help you deepen your understanding of our game. Let's have a look. Ding Li Ren is playing with the black pieces and after the move e4, he goes for e5. It's his main repertoire. We have been seeing it, him playing already numerous times in the World Championship match against uh, Ding Li Ren, but he played it already for many, many years. And we get to see also in this game, the Spanish opening. So bishop b5, a6, bishop to a4, knight to f6, castling, bishop e7, very standard moves up to here. Rook e1, b5, bishop b3, and white is going to meet this uh, move, uh, castling kingside with the move a4, challenging. The pawn on uh, b5, of course, threatening to take so that the rook on um, a8 will be hanging. You're unable to recapture for that reason. And black decides to keep the queen side closed with the move b4. And now white thinks, let's try to open the center with the move d4. That pawn can be taken, but it's not really recommended. If you do take, rather than recapturing the pawn with your knight, you first Play the move e5, attacking the knight, and you're losing control over the center. The knight will be forced to go to an inferior square, after which you have free development, you have possibilities of regaining the pawn. This would definitely favor white. So for that reason, the main move here for black is to maintain control over that pawn on e5, getting a grip in the center with your pawns, with the move d6, and now white goes for the move d takes e5. It's releasing the tension, looks uh, very logical. And now after d, d takes e5, knight takes e5, the knights are getting swapped as well. So we do have a symmetrical position and normally in these kind of symmetrical positions, you would not expect it to, to become play very uh, sharp in, uh, in this case, as very likely with one open file pieces are going to get uh, swapped, maybe first the queens, later on the rooks. But white has different ideas and wants to keep the um, queens on the board. So therefore the move queen f3 played. So the queen is coming over to the king side and after white um, gets some time, he would like to bring its knight to d2, f1, later to g3 and let's see what these pieces together with this bishop on b3, maybe later the bishop will come to g5, white is able to build up some sort of initiative. In one of the games from the World Championship match, um, Napo with the white pieces played sort of similar attack from a different variation, but potentially with, with just a relatively small army, white is able to uh, build up a lot of pressure on the uh, king side. But black, has its own ideas and played here the move bishop uh, c5. And obviously the bishop is more actively placed than it is on, um, on e7. Now the bishop is hoping to become a very strong piece on uh, this diagonal. And black is even considering a move like a knight g4 to intensify the pressure against the pawn on uh, f2. Therefore, white goes h3 and black goes uh, bishop uh, b7. Very normal developing move. These bishops are nicely working together, covering quite a number of uh, squares. White played here the move knight d2, very thematical way of playing in, um, in this uh, Spanish opening. As I mentioned, the main point is to, uh, to get the knight over to g3 to build up the pressure on the king side. And later on, the knight is heading for the um, f5 square. And you can understand with a knight on f5, there are a lot of attacking ideas, a lot of mating ideas. And it was actually former world champion Gary Kasparov who once said that once a knight is on f5, it is worth a pawn. That's, of course, 
an, a bit of an exaggeration, but of course there are examples uh, in which it's definitely worth a pawn. This case, you're not even a pawn down. So black should try to anticipate that uh, plan. And the next move played by Ding is very interesting and remarkable because he is trying to stop the plan of uh, white rerouting its knight to the king side. And now you think it's impossible to prevent the knight from coming there. But um, Black's next move, King H8, has the idea that if white continues with its uh, plan, with the move knight f1, then all of a sudden there is this option to sacrifice your knight on e4. And after rook takes e4, the rook is pinned, white is a piece up, and rather than capturing the rook with your bishop, the plan is here to play the move f5, and black is going to win material. The rook cannot go away, is in that case the queen on f3 is hanging. And now you understand the move king h8. Had the king still been on g on g8, then it uh, the black's last move would not have been possible because of the uh, bishop on b3. So king h8 is just an excellent prophylactical move, anticipating white's uh, plan. Therefore, knight f1 is not really uh, possible. But if knight f1 is not possible, then look at these pieces. They are not doing uh, that much on a1 and, uh, and c1. White played. Instead, here, the move queen to g3, attacking the pawn on e5, and black defends it here with the move queen to e7. And now black has various ideas, including to move the knight away from f6 to h5, maybe the knight can come into f4, but also one of the main points of black's play is to launch its f-pawn at some point with the move f7, f5, so that both the rook on the f-file, as well as the bishop on this diagonal, will be able to participate in a potential attack. Things are absolutely not easy for uh, white here because the knight can still not move away. If the knight is moving away, let's say to f1, then the pawn on e4 is no longer sufficiently defended. Black can just take with the knight. So therefore, white played here to move queen h4, protecting the pawn on e4. The knight is pinned, cannot move at the moment because the queens are opposing each other. So the big question is what is uh, black going to do now and now you're, the next move by black is something you would probably not have expected at all I think if you look at this position you think okay most of the pieces are doing pretty okay very a logical move would be for instance just to place the rook on the only open file but the main question is what are you going to accomplish with that you're not able to infiltrate on uh, one of these squares it's very well covered so you can place a rook on the open file but it's not clear what is, uh, what is next. And it's better to think where you would like to play because these bishops and knight, they're looking in the direction of the white king. And if you can try to launch an attack against the king, that would be even nicer. Black's next move is just absolutely amazing. It's a move in RKF definitely missed. As black goes here for the move g5, very bizarre pawn move in front of your own king. But the idea is to uh, open up the G file for the rook, to let the rooks join the attack rather on the G file than on the D file. Now the big question is what should Y do? Should he capture the pawn or not? If you ignore the pawn, let's say you go for the move queen h6, then it's rook g8 and next is rook g6, the queen is gonna get trapped. So therefore, you don't have much of a choice. You can come back to uh, to g3, but that, that's obviously a waste of time. The rook will come to uh, g8 anyway, and black will try to push its pawns to, uh, to open up files in the direction of the white king. So white accepts the challenge, takes on uh, g5, but now the rook comes with tempo hitting the queen. Where should the queen go to? If the queen would go back to h4, which was not played in the game, then there is a fantastic idea. I cannot resist showing you. Tactical blow here is to take on e4, to remove the pawn, hitting the queen. And now after queen takes e7, Ding's idea definitely would have been here to take with the rook on g2, an absolutely shocking sacrifice with the point that rather than 
taking the, the queen on e7. Now, if you take on g2, you first capture the knight on d2 with check. It's a discovered check on the king. The king got to go away, for instance, to uh, h2. But now it's knight f3. First, we save our knight. It's, uh, once again, a very useful check. And if the king, once again, goes away to, uh, to g3, because going to g2 makes things even worse. We can just always take on uh, e1, of course. But there is, uh, after king uh, g3, also the option of just recapturing the queen on uh, e7. And all of a sudden, the white king is caught in some sort of a mating net as rook g8 is coming next. The rook on e1 is hanging as well. So you can see how strong black's pieces are once the position gets opened. It's very nicely illustrated with this uh, previous uh, line. So queen h4, not a good move. Queen f5 looks like a more sensible move. And now you're still a pawn down. Where is the compensation? You're not in a hurry. Just make sure that all your pieces will be included in the attack. And therefore the move rook g7 is just an excellent idea. I really like this, uh, this move with a simple plan of getting the rook over to, uh, to g8 and to increase the pressure against the pawn on uh, g2. White um, still needs to catch up with its own uh, development. These pieces are still not doing anything. And Ding um, faced here the move knight uh, f3. I mean, maybe knight f1 could have been another idea um, but difficult to say. Maybe this is not also not too great. After rook a g8, there is this threat to take on uh, g2. White may still defend with something like uh, like g3. And still, the, the threats have been parried, but we can continue here with, uh, with moves like h5. Bishop c8 could be an idea to attack the queen, to win back the pawn on uh, h3 instead of h5. Bishop c8 could have been played right away as well after the queen moves you do win back your pawn on uh, h3 when all of a sudden all your pieces are doing uh, great on that uh, on that king side white is in trouble anyway and um in Arkiev, played the move knight to f3 but then rook a g8 is played anyway and the reason in Arkiev placed his knight on f3 is that he wanted to play here the move bishop g5 so that the knight does support the bishop. But if we go back one move, I want to show you one line because the other possibility could be to take away the pressure against that pawn on g2 by moving the pawn up to, uh, to g4. But then Ding's idea here is to sacrifice the knight. This is just absolutely great. After h takes g4, the idea is not to take with the rook on g4 because then the king is running away and it will be in a safe place. But instead, rather than taking on g4, the main point would have been to go bishop c8. The queen is under threat. Queen doesn't have many good squares to go to. If you take the pawn on e5, then you're offering the exchange of queens. Things are looking great, but there is bishop takes g4. Now the bishop is joining the attack from another angle and the plan is to take on f3. So if you go queen takes e7, it is bishop takes f3 with a discovered check. The queen is also still hanging. There are a lot of mating ideas. White can give up the queen so that at least there will be one rook less in the attack. But after taking everything on uh, g5, if the king goes to f1, it will be rook h5 and mate is inevitable. Also in case of king h2, there is bishop takes f2 and these two bishops, they ensure that the king cannot go back to the g-file and rook h5 will be made next. So that very nicely shows that g4 is also weakening the white king. That's not a comfortable defense. Instead, bishop g5 seems very logical. As you are bringing a piece into the game, you're attacking the knight on f6. The knight seems like it cannot move, but ding had a different idea in mind. He played here the move, knight takes e4. That is just an absolutely amazing move, sacrificing the queen. If you do take on e7, it is rook takes g2, and it's gonna be checkmate. If the king goes to f1, it is rook takes f2 with mate. 
both rooks are joining the attack. If you go with your king to h1, then the knight is going to give checkmate on f2. So the queen can absolutely not be captured. But then it's very difficult to come up with a better idea. You may eliminate that knight on e4, but after rook takes g5, knight takes g5, rook takes g5, queen is still hanging, the rook as well. If the queen goes away, then there will be the move f5, and uh, eventually we are going to take the rook and black will emerge with an extra piece. So instead, white thought, I need to hang on to my uh, bishop on g5, played here the move, h4, and now black has a lot of interesting moves, including just to take on f2 with a bishop, with check, but knight takes g5 is also very simple, just removing that very annoying bishop, and after h takes g5, black just continues, he wants to open up the, um, the g file, and uh, now the queen is under threat, you're intending to take on g2, if you do capture with a knight on g5, it's rook takes g5, hitting the queen, if the queen goes away, it's going to be rook takes g2 with, uh, with mate to follow. For instance, if you do take on f7, rook takes g2 with a check. Look at these beautiful bishops. They were there with a clear mission. King h1 leads to queen h4 with checkmate. If the king goes into the other direction, you can swap the queens easily, followed by taking on f2. King got to go back to g1, rook g2 once again, and now king f1. But there is very nice move. Before going rook g1, which does allow king e2, you just make sure that the white king is caught in a mating net, cannot escape, and nothing can be done against rook g1 with checkmate on the next move. Look at the cooperation of black pieces, while the rook on a1 never got a chance to come back into the game. Therefore, instead of queen uh, takes f7, there followed queen h3. The queen comes back into defense, but before capturing on g2, we just bring our queen into play with the idea to take on f2. If you protect the pawn, it will be queen with queen to g6. Renewing the threat of taking on g2, it's attacked three times, cannot be sufficiently, sufficiently defended by other pieces. White would have to go for something like g3, but then it's rook h5. After the queen goes away, it's going to be checkmate on h1. Beautiful attack just completely crushing. Therefore, white had to find an alternative plan dealing with that threat of queen takes f2. Played here the move rook to e3, but now it's time to harvest because we have the option just to take with our rook on g2. There's not much of a choice. You cannot keep that uh, rook alive there. So white decided to take. You take the, with the bishop the queen, King takes g2, bishop takes e3, f takes e3, time to do the material count, and you see that it's a queen and two pawns versus rook and bishop. It's absolutely game over. And probably Inarchia felt embarrassed with his play. It's just move 28, and he has just he has been completely crushed from this uh, powerful attack. He didn't want to resign that early, played on a few more moves after c5, bishop c4. Now the queen started to uh, attack the king and uh, to attack some pawns. King f3, queen f5, king g3. And now rather than taking the pawn on c2, white tried to, uh, black tried to win the pawn on e3. Queen e4, attacking the uh, bishop. b3, queen takes e3, king g2, queen d2, king h1. And now the f pawn is joining as well. So you just push your pawns. The game lasted a few more moves. Just be careful, not allowing checkmate on g8. Queen h6, king g2. Now it's no longer checkmate. Of course, white had to solve the check first. Now it's time to bring up the king. Rook d1, queen g5, king f2, queen f4, check. No chance for white to do something in the meantime. After king e3, f4, the pawn is coming up with check. Now you're able to take with check on c2, double attack on the king and rook, rook d3, king f6, bishop takes pawn, queen g2, king cannot go anywhere. You got a block with your rook, but now after king e6, finally, Inarchy have resigned. He had seen enough. It's a sort of a mating net. The king cannot go anywhere. Rook is pinned. You can do many things, including 
just uh, Queen G6 with uh, with mate to uh, to come. So therefore, Inarchiev resigned. But for me, it was all about these first 28 moves. It was just an amazing tornado coming over the board. There was nothing White could uh, do against it. Very nice way of uh, building up an attack, including all your pieces, opening up new files for your major pieces to target the White uh, King. I hope you found it a very instructive uh, one and um, hopefully we will see more exciting games which uh, are not just purely tactics but to see how games are decided that's how you win games just to build up your game th that is at least as important as finishing it off thanks for watching subscribe to the channel and i'll be back soon bye bye